to a moment in thoroughbred racing history. The Mooney Valley Racing Club proudly present the 71st of a series, the WS Cox Plate, a Group 1 event over 2,040 metres of $1.7 million. 92, I still think, sits there as, as the best. There'd been a, a match race at the Caulfield Carnival on the Wednesday before the Caulfield Cup between Let's Alive and Better Loosen Up, who was trying to come back from injury. And Let's Alive won that match race. So she was there. Better Loosen Up was there. He'd won it in 1990. Three-year-olds were there. Superimposer won the Canberra Cup. The favourite, he'd had a perfect preparation naturalism. He won the Fian, he won the Turnbull. He was just spot on and he was a very short price favourite. They all turned up for this race and it was just, you know, it was going to be exciting. Whoever won, the best horse would win for sure. And we thought it'd be naturalism. Look, he was, uh, he was always going to be a Cox Plate horse. A brilliant 2,000 metre horse. Uh, he, he came into the race as favourite. It was a superb Cox Plate that year, the best of the best, probably the best field assembled that I've seen in a long, long time. It might be the best Cox Plate of all time. But if you went through the horses, the amount of horses that were in that race that had Group 1 form and were great horses, I don't think you'll get a better Cox Plate. You'll always get good horses in a Cox Plate, always. But you, I, I doubt whether you'll ever get a feel like that again. And, uh, yeah, you strive to win those type of races, you know, like you, when you finally get to a stage where you've got a name and you've got the ability to get the good rides in those races, you strive to win them. You know, it's a great feeling, great feeling. There he is, the winner of the Fian Stakes, a brilliant winner, and I'm sure bound now for the Cox Plate here in October, the outstanding horse, Naturalism. Well, there's no doubt about it. When jockeys start to ride winners early in the day and they have good rides on the day, Good jockeys think they're invincible. Dittman riding hard on Flitter and she's responding. Flitter is out after Serene. Look at the 150. They draw away now. The more winners they ride, the more the more they think they can ride. They ride two, they think they can ride three or four. They ride four, they think they can ride five or six. So it's just, just the way your mentality is. And uh, like that particular day, I was on fire. I was fit, well, ready to go. I think in those races, and you've got a, a, a genuine chance to win as you go into the race, like your, your adrenaline's pumping and you, you know you're full of hype. Well, naturalism on that particular day, like he was very, very well. He was in in prime condition. You know, Lee had him ready to go, and I'd won three or four Group One races on him, so I knew how he had to be had to be ridden. I was a steward from uh, 1978 until uh, 2008, and I was chairman of stewards from 1996 to 2008, uh, and I would have. Um, officiated at every Cox Plate from 1978 until 2008. He might win yet the champ. Graveman took the lead off. Kingston Town swapping them. What a run. Kingston Town wins it and extra Graveman. was labelled the Way for Age Championship of Australia, of Australasia, and it certainly lived up to that hype year after year after year. And Bone Crusher races into equine immortality. Rubidons hit the front and Rubidons won the Cox Plate. And it was something that we really looked forward to each year because we always expected and see a wonderful spectacle. It was really something special. I think we had the six top rated horses in Australia in the field and seven of the next uh, 20. And so it was uh, arguably the, the highest quality Cox Plate in the great race's history. The number one weight for age race to win because you have a look at the profiles of the Cox Plate winners, the mares, the three-year-olds, the stallions, the geldings, the fillies, they're all exceptional horses that were champions and raced against the best of the best all the time. So you know that you have to be finely tuned and switched on, that is for sure. And there's always that apprehension tension in a jockey's room where it, it is a big day and uh, jockeys are uh, a little more serious, if you like. In particular, if you're riding a chance, a horse in the market on Cox Plate Day, you know you're on the spotlight, that's for sure. To walk out into the mounting yard and all the owners are on edge, it's Cox Plate. Yeah. All the trainers are like, they've trained their horse to the minute and they're being very professional and they're all confident in their own way. And then there's the jockeys that are trying to relax the owners and the trainers and say, I've got this, it's all right. Well, he's such a cool cat. Blue, better loosen up. He's never the pick of the yard, if you like. He was just a plain brown, wishy-washy style of uh, coat of a horse, but he had a huge chest, good girth on him, great hind quarter, 
David Hayes spoke to me briefly, mentioned a couple of things to me that don't worry about the horse's lead up form. He's flying on the track and he hasn't had races suited in his lead up runs. But the champion's fighting back on the rail. Let's elope about our neck in front of Better Loosen Up. He weighs exactly the same as he did the year that he won it. I've got him right. He's happy, he's sound, he's well, and he just needs luck in running, and I think he's a great each way chance. David legged me up and said, good luck. Yeah, it was uh, like sitting in a recliner chair, to be honest. It was really comfortable. I remember Tuesday morning, I was leaving track work and there was a bloke called Danny Power that rode for the Herald Sun. Bart Cummins happened to say, he said, I wonder who I'm going to put on this mare, let's elope. And I was walking to my car and he said, uh, see that bloke there? He said, I'll be putting him on. He said, why do you, why do you think that, Danny? Why would you say that? He said, you won't die wondering, Bart. The phone rings, it was Lee Friedman. They had naturalism, mannerism, and superimposed. He said, you've got to ride in the Cox Plate, Greg. And I said, no, I haven't, mate. Oh, you can ride the old boy super. And Superimpose is racing away. Look at Superimpose, ease down on the line, and Superimpose wins the cup. As soon as I hung the phone up, it rings again. Everybody thinks, don't tell me it was Bart, let's elope. Well, it wasn't. It was David Hayes. Oh, he said, oh, you can ride better loosen up if you want. And I said, no, I've got to ride in it. And he, he said, OK. And uh, so that's how I got the ride. Otherwise, Damien would have been riding it because he had to stick with mannerism. When I jumped on Superimpose, Anthony legged me up and we just gelled straight away, you know, and walk around the mountain yard, patting him. And he never blinked an eyelid. He never got upset once. He never got toey or anything like that and yeah he was just a, he was just the absolute angel he was i remember going to the track breakfast with the stars at mooney valley joe agresta um came over to me after the track work and just whispered in my ear that you should try and get on let's elope she's flying it was a great piece of work this morning and uh, i approached bart and let him to let him know that i was available to ride let's elope the word got back to me pretty quick bart's put your name down on let's elope I was a very happy man. If it's a dry day, she'll probably win. If it's a wet day, well, she could probably uh, perform similar to uh, this morning. He, he reminded me about that she can lay in, and that was pretty much about it. And we were waiting for the bell to go for all the jockeys to get legged up. But in the background, there's a lot of noise, a lot of humming. I think there was a helicopter up above. The adrenaline was at its peak. Everyone assumed that the palace rain was just a wet tracker. So he, he started big, big odds. And But David, as he, he led me on him in the mounting yard, he said, don't you worry about this horse. He said, he's a seriously good horse. It's Palace Rain on the outside, about a neck in front, pulling clear from Palace Symphony and Palace Rain. Goes on to win it by a length to Palace Symphony. Doesn't matter about the, the track, he'll be good on anything. So you've got a really good chance here. That gave me a little bit more of a, a pep <laughs> going to the start. <laughs> the crowd is so close to the action. You ride on top of it and, and as a jockey, you, even you go out into the mounting yard at the, at the back of the grandstand, you've got this towering grandstand above you and, and uh, huge crowds. You go through the tunnel out onto the track and, and thousands of screaming uh, punters there right next to you it's uh, it makes the hair stand up on the back of your neck and so cox plate day the biggest day of them all yeah it, it's uh, it, it goes up to another level it's uh, it's fantastic number one onto the track a winner of 2.5 million dollars rough habit five group one wins last season number two the evergreen champion superimpose Number three, the winner of the 1990 Cox Plate, Better Loosen Up. Number four, Prince Salieri, fourth in the race last year. Number five, Citizen, two placings in the race in the last two years. Number six, the current Wait for Age champion of Australia, the AJC Derby winner, Naturalism. Number seven, Kinjate, the Epsom Handicap winner. Number eight, the mighty mayor, one of the greatest to grace Australian race courses, Let's Elope. Number nine, the Caulfield Cup winner, Mannerism. Number ten, a group one winner at his past two starts, the champion three-year-old Coronation Day. Bart Cummings, second runner, Muirfield Village, Stephen King in the saddle.
Number 12, the Caulfield Guineas winner, Palace Rain. Number 13, winner of the two-year-old Triple Crown and the Golden Slipper Stakes, Burst. And number 14, from Sydney, slight chance, Shane Dye is the rider. Next two minutes, you're going to experience probably as good a two minutes of sport anywhere in the world. It'll be over in two minutes. And it, 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 it's just something about it, the roar. And, and you can hear that sound coming up. And nowhere else in Australia racing, we probably will race, and do we get that sound, that roar? Because people are so close, they can nearly touch them. The one thing that I remember, when I trotted him back up to the barriers, he got beyond the gates and he didn't want to walk. He wanted to jog, jig, jog, jig, jog, jig, jog, and he was eyeballing all the other horses. So it, it, it was game on for him. I knew it was that we were ready for something special. That we, we were ready to go. Let's alone wasn't the easiest horse to ride, and I had a little bit of a shoulder injury, which compounded the issue. But this was my first ride in the Cox Plate, so I knew the enormity of it and let all that noise around me just disappear and stayed focused and knew I had a big job in front of me. Actually, I said to Greg Hall on the particular day, I got behind Peter Hudson and he, and, I, and, and he, and he gave me a bit of a bad run. And I should have won early, an earlier race. And I said to Greg Hall, I said, if I get behind this bloke again, I said, just kick me up the arse, will you? They stay into attention for the place. They're off. And superimposed, missed it about a length and a half, and away brilliantly here, Kinjate flying from the outside with Coronation Day. I knew his race pattern. I knew the way he raced. The gates open, and the roar is huge. He always gets back last, second last, or whatever. We really look to see that uh, no rider uh, contravenes the rules and causes interference, especially in the early stages of the race, because it can be detrimental to a horse's chances. Naturalism fifth on the inside. Naturalism was the best horse in the race, I thought, right then, having one on him twice. He's got natural gate speed, and that's an advantage in a Cox Plate going out of the straight the first time, and I thought he'd be in the first four or half a dozen, one off the fence. So I wanted to keep an eye on him, and I was in a really nice rhythm going out of the straight the first time and down that bottom side from the mile to the 12. She's going forward down to the winning post the first time. Muirfield Village out wide, let's elope back in the centre. You know, I remember the race well. I didn't want to be too far back uh, because it was, it was going to be a pressure race at the finish, so I wanted to be somewhere in the, in the mix of things. He was travelling very well, extremely well. That horse, when he raced big, he travelled strong. You know, all those group ones I went on in, he was hard on the bit and wanting to go all the way. And I was probably going down that back there, I might have been midfield or a little, little worse, but not too far off the leader, maybe five or six lengths. He was travelling very well, extremely well. It wasn't a very strongly run race, it was a very steadily run race, so there was a bit of, uh, when they steadied the pace, there was a little bit of bumping and barging of it, which just happens when things need to go a little bit faster. But I recall going past about the 1400 metre mark, they started to jam up a little because everybody had got into their positions. So the tempo of the race slowed down and uh, there was quite a bit of jostling and uh, jamming up. And I remember there was a horse on my outside that cut in front of me and had half a length on me and cut in front of me and I actually got checked and got uh, jostled, jostled out of it. And then I was pumped out three wide. But that was okay because I still had cover getting down to the to the thousand metre side of the, of the track. This is working perfectly for me. As we straighten up around, around the, the, the half mile, I'm sitting in behind Burst, and I pull out four wide to go up a, outside of Burst. And I'm trotting, absolutely trucking into the race. And I'm thinking to myself, we get to the school, and I'm thinking to myself, I reckon I could win the Cox Plate here. It's going really good. It's flying. And when I when I knew that Peter Hudson was in front of me, the, Money person I didn't want to didn't want to follow. I was actually getting quite desperate. I had a wall horse outside. I was thinking about you know holding the two positions and getting back to the rail. But looking at it from behind, it looked pretty squeezy. So I thought to myself, now I'm going to have to get to the stage there at the half mile somewhere to be getting out. Next minute, I'm heading towards the ground. <laughs> and all that could go through my head was, why? The bloody thing just fell over. There's a fall in the Cox Plate, and Naturalism's lost the rider. Sinister is out of the race, and so's Palace Rain. Rough Habit has been knocked out of it now, and as the race to the 500 metre mark now, and the leader here is King Jate. Here comes Let's Elope. But all of a sudden, it's like a tripwire. Palace Rain of Nick on Naturalism, 
and I saw a rough habit run into the back of them. I saw citizens' colours. Naturalism actually propped and nearly tipped me over his head, you know. And then when he propped and, and, he, and, and he swerved, then he knuckled over and then I fell. He, he was trying to get out of the horse's road, don't worry. Sometimes they can't, you know, they just crash. But he, from a, from a full gallop, he did prop to try and get, try and miss him. And when he did, he flung me up over his head. And then, of course, I probably unbalanced him, you know, and then down he went. After all the carnies that have fallen and all that, which doesn't go through a jockey's mind, you know, because you still concentrate, you're focused on winning this cox play. Whatever happens, it doesn't matter. You think of nothing else bar winning it. Naturalism, Mick Dittman, who was following him, just gets super banned in the air. And Greg Childs makes the decision, seeing that, press the button and just go. On let's alone. It was hectic. It was, it was, it was, it was off its head because at the 400 metre mark, there was three and a half lengths between the remainder of the field. The tempo of the race was really picking up quickly, and let's alone was coming into it really strong. But let's alone had this bad tendency of laying in. I was able to switch the stick into my left hand, which was my sore shoulder hand. I had to do it because otherwise I wouldn't have got the response that I needed to win the Cox Plate. Then I noticed superimposed started to circle the field. Let's Elope also took off, striding up outside the leaders on the home turn to basically join the leaders who were slight chance. Uh, Kinja Day, Prince Salieri was moving into the race. A bit of loosen up behind them was uh, looking for a run with Simon Marshall aboard. So the business end of the race on the home turn was really taking shape. Simon could ride and he maybe could have come underneath my shoulder and pushed me out. But I held him back in and so he said to make another decision on better loosen up. Super joined me again and we were head and head. And then the inside horses, the three-year-olds were all shifting out. As they dropped off inside me, I could see this four horse gap just appear with, with, with let's elope off the fence. And then I pointed his nose in that gap inside just at the 100 metre mark and he was flying, give him another tickle with the left hand and we're off. And I thought, here we go. He's gonna love this because he never gets beaten a, in a photo finish. And he was loving the competition too. Three strides later, and she shifted in so quick, it was three horses within about five strides and just shut me out with that 50 to go. And, and it's just like a bad dream. It's Cox Plate just disappearing. Superimposed, we're still winding up. And so I've only got one job to do, and that is get past Let's Alone. And he knew what I was doing, and I knew what he was doing. I got stronger and stronger with the adrenaline rushing that we're going to get her, we're going to get her, you and I are going to get her, mate. Whatever we do, we're going to get her. You throw the kitchen sink at her. So close to the winning post, 50 metres to go, I heard this screaming noise, and it was G Hall and superimposed coming down the outside and he blazed me right on the line. We finished second, but there was a lot of commotion going on on pulling up, everybody yelling at me, you know, what was I doing? I was hanging in, causing a lot of interference, and uh, there was to be more to be heard about that. Now, Kinja Tay in the middle from the off-field village, followed by Super and Pose. Let's alone about Riders race to Kinja Tay. Slight chance fights back down the outside, Super and Pose. Let's alone in the middle, Prince Salieri getting a run, better loosen up and Super and Pose. Let's alone in front, Super and Pose driving. Super, I think Super allows to let's alone on the Cox plate. Third, maybe Kinja Tay the rail, better loosen up behind them. And the rider of burst has been thrown from the saddle after going over the line and a fall in the Cox Plate at the 600 metre mark. Three of them have been put out of the race. Naturalism, Citizen and Palace Rain. And the judge has called for the photo. The judge has called for the photo at a sensational WS Cox Plate to 1992. Greg Hawk standing on Superimposer's neck waving to the crowd, declared as the winner. I rode in and I could see David Hayes go for Arthur you know, and just threw the reins over his head and just said he just should have won, I'm sorry. And with that, they all turned their backs and walked off. It was something else, it was something else. You, 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 don't, know, you don't know you're doing it at the time. I've seen footage of it and all that, and the adrenaline's rushing so much, so I, um, this time I stood up in the irons and I went, Phew. I do remember this way in and we go back to the jockey's room. First thing I done was I said to Mick Dipman, I said, bend over. So I kicked him up the arse. So it was unusual where we had a protest fifth against second in the Cox play, but there was a short margin between second and fifth. So it wasn't surprising that Simon 
did lodge an objection because he was firmly of the belief that he would have beaten Let's Elope home had interference not occurred. You put up a strong case in the inquiry room, there's no friends in there. You make a good case for you and your horse and your connections and you leave it up to the jury to decide, which are the chief stewards. They decided that Better Lessons Up running was denied and the protest was upheld. But to this day, I dispute the fact that he was ever going to beat Let's Elope. And I'd actually like to have another crack at that inquiry because I believe that uh, there was never a full gap there for Better Loosen Up to come through. Simon Marshall was desperate and he was pushing through a gap that wasn't entirely there for him. <laughs> we won't hold a grudge. That was 28 years ago. We move on. Superimpose, the mighty Superimpose has taken out the Cox Plate for 92. I really believe that actually superimposed saved the Cox Plate in his own way because it went from despair from everyone, from the putters and everyone else. What's going to happen now? The eight-year-old who'd run second the year before had run second in the Melbourne Cup. He was no slouch. He was a great horse. And he sailed down the outside. But he sort of sealed himself into racing immortality by winning that at eight years of age. That saved the race because it became even a greater event after that. Superimposed deserved it. He was he was a superstar. He deserved it. If Let's Alope had, had, had gone straight and, and won it, she would have deserved it too. Better loosen up. It would have been fantastic to see him. And, and, and he probably was the unlucky one out of it all. This particular day, it didn't come off. It didn't come off. This wouldn't have been the best story of a Cox Plate unless circumstances prevailed the way they did on the day. This is just, just adds to the legend of the race. You look at that stuff, but you've got to park it and move on pretty quick. And as you can tell, after this interview I have, mate, I've forgotten about it. <laughs> if you were viewing the race and assessing how the horses were travelling at the 800 metres, there wasn't a horse travelling any better than naturalism at that stage of the race. He was, put it in Mick Dittman's words later, he was bolted. Who knows what would have happened if Palace Rain had have stayed on its feet and naturalism had have stayed on its feet, we might have seen the best finish of all time. Without the incident at the half mile, I, I feel sure that he would have won on one easy. Just before he fell, if he'd have got room to move, you know, I'd only, only wanted, I'd only wanted another, another 50 metres, and I'd have been, I'd have been past Peter Hutchinson from inside me, and then he, there'd been no, no interference. I'd have been gone. And you start to think about like how, how did he fall? What, what happened? And you realise what exactly happened. The horse, somehow, that horse inside is touched something's heels from inside him, got caught up with his inside horse's legs, tipped over sideways and bang it. I went over the top and couldn't get out of his way. I don't think there was anything spoken in the ambulance. <laughs> and this year, well, let's <laughs> say we, we, it, we just like, they all just fell, fell into one basket. Every superstar over the, over the previous five or six years to all fall in the one basket for the greatest race ever. And I don't think, as I say, we'll, we'll never be, you'll never get a race as good as that ever again. And even though I destroyed it, <laughs> but I'm so, still proud to, to, just to just to be involved with that race. Oh, well, would you call it a highlight? I don't know whether you call it a highlight, but uh, but but to yeah, to be involved in that, to, it's a great talking point. Uh, to to this day, to this day, it's a it's a great talking point. It'll never be forgotten because of the quality of the Cox Plate that year is quite extraordinary. Those horses, like you, you'll never see a Cox Plate again like that. Some horses I'd like to see, without mentioning names champions that have won it before that particular race, would have they? Because there's never been a cock plate like that and there'll never be another one like it. They're off. And superimposed, missed it about a length and a half and away brilliantly here, Kinjate flying from the outside with Coronation Day. Slight chance going up in the centre, naturalism behind him with Palace Rain and here's the filly burst down the outside. She's going forward down to the winning post the first time. Muirfield Village out wide, lets her late back in the centre as they steady with 1,700 to go and Kinjate led now from burst second. Coronation Day, third inside, slight chance, fourth the length, naturalism fifth on the inside. Outside at Palace Rain, Muirfield Village out four 
well wide around Citizen. Let's Alope had to check there over on the inside. Mannerism from Prince Salieri. Then came Superimposed. Two to better loosen up. And Rough Habit last of all. 1,400 to go on the plate. And Slight Chance took up the running. Slight Chance, the leader now from Kinjate, who comes off the fence. They're followed by Burst and Coronation Day, the rail. Then Palace Rain fifth. Naturalism running sixth on the inside. Muirfield Village out three deep around Citizen. They're followed by Mannerism further back. Then Let's Alope out three deep around the outside of Prince Salieri. Two to superimpose third last, second last in the Cox Plate of the 1,000 metre mark now is better loosen up. And Rough Habit, the Kiwi, last of all. Kinjate goes up to slight chance at the 900 metre mark, a length and a half burst. Coronation Day getting a nice run, a half away, fourth on the rail. Then Palace Rain, Muirfield Village. Naturalism is locked away on the inside now as they start to make their run. The mayor pulls to the outside, lets a lobe around Citizen. Mannerism went back to the fence. Old superimpose peeling to the outside with better loosen up. There's a fall! There's a fall in the Cox Plate. Plate. And Naturalism's lost the rider. Citizen is out of the race and so is Palace Rain. Rough Habit has been knocked out of it now. And as the race to the 500 metre mark now and the leader here is King Jate. Here comes Let's Elope. Let's Elope with a mighty run out wide going up quickly now. King Jate in the middle from Muirfield Village followed by Super and Let's Elope out wide as race to King Jate. Slight chance fights back down the outside. Super and Pose. Let's Elope in the middle. Prince Salieri getting a run. Better loosen up and Super and Pose. Let's Elope in front. Super Super in pace, driving, super, I think super a nose to let's elope with a cox plate. The race to the 500 metre mark now and the leader here is King Jate. Here comes Let's Elope. Let's Elope with a mighty run out wide going up quickly now. King Jate in the middle from Muirfield Village followed by Super and Pose. Let's Elope out wide as race to King Jate. Slight chance fights back down the outside Super and Pose. Let's Elope in the middle Prince Salieri getting a run. Better loosen up and Super and Pose. Let's Elope in front. Super and Pose driving. Super. I think Super a nose to Let's Elope with a cox plate.